Hello and welcome to the High Performance Interviews. Today I am joined by Lynette from Dorset. Hi Lynette. Hi Lucy, lovely to be here. Great to have you here. Thank you. And I'm Lucy, a high flow coach. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Lynette, we're going to dive deep into how you're using flow in the flow state and all of those things that we learned actually on a course together at the beginning of 2023 and how you use those in your life and in your business. But if you can first just give us a little bit about your background and what you do at the moment, that would be fantastic. Of course. I'm the founder of um, a consulting company which nearly 25 years old now and uh, we're, we're international and we do three things. We headhunt people, we coach senior executives and we also provide them with research and insights about other businesses, etc. And I, I focus on the executive coaching and uh, leadership development arm of the business. Oh, fantastic. That sounds very full on work, but enjoyable. it's fun. I, for me, it's not a job. If that makes sense. Oh, gosh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful when your work can be your joy? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's challenging because of the, the people that I'm working with, but that's the, the joy of it as well. Yeah, fantastic. So just with the flow side of things and the flow state, how have you integrated that more into your life, having done the high flow course? Some of it's very simple. Uh, some of the simple learnings that we experience, just being very organized in my day. I make sure that my clothes are ready for the following day. My my food is ready for, I, I, I cook on the weekend for, for a week. So I make sure that I've got my breakfast and my lunches and my dinners. Everything is very organized. So I don't have to think about it too much. So I, I get up very early because I am a meditator so I find that the meditation practice uh, gets me into a flow state and the flow state for me is when I'm just in the zone I'm really focused and in a meditative state time just disappears and as a result it really sets me up for the day it makes me far more focused so from a, a work perspective my days are very full. There are times when I feel I can flag. So I take good care of myself. I might go for a walk in nature or quickly go down to the beach for a 15 minute walk by the seaside. So I clear my head and I find that that really helps. So just once again, getting myself into for, forgetting the thinking yes. and just getting myself into some people call it the zone. Some people call it hyper focus. And when I get into that into that space, and then I come back, particularly if I'm having to be creative or innovate something, and that's part of what I do in my role. Sometimes you can sit at your desk and nothing comes. Everything is blank. So that's when I go, okay, need to step away. Go and do something completely different. Mm. Go for that walk meditate whatever it might be and then I come back get myself back into that flow state because my head's clear everything's clear and then I'm, I'm back into it the one thing I have done with the work is when I have to innovate I switch off my phone I switch off my laptop I go old school I'll, I'll do mind maps I'll write but I get myself into that state that flow state beforehand for me, uh, the meditative practice of breath work and that sort of thing, it starts me off to get into that flow state. Yeah. And once I start being creative, I have, I have to write something or whatever it is that I need to do, but everything else is switched off. Nothing else exists. The other thing I've realized by doing that, I can't do it in my office. I have to go into where my dining area is. I'm surrounded by art there. and um, a lot of light and so when I sit there it just flows I'm in the zone and I I can just write I can do whatever it is I need to do and then I forget how much time I've spent on that mm -hmm. yeah and I can spend a whole day I do stop you know to eat and things like that 
if I find that I get tired because that happens, um, I will stop. If I can't get back into that flow state, I'll go, I'll do that another day. Yeah. I used in the past, before I did the learning, I used to go, no, no, come on, you've got to do this. So the more you push it, the, the further away it goes. I've learned to just go, you know what, I'm done. And I've done some great work here. And I'll come back to it. If I can't do it tomorrow, it'll be another day. Because if you carry on pushing through, it's counterproductive, isn't it? Oh, totally. And that's more exhausting, actually. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And frustrating, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And for and for some people to actually stop and to step away, like you have learned to do, and that yes. that's what we teach, right? Is yes, is really hard because they feel I just need to get things done. I just have to yes. keep pushing through. I can't stop. I can't take time for a walk. Time to go on the beach. Time to, and that is so. If they under, if people understand that that kind of rest, that kind yes. of active recovery, yes. is oh. part of the work. Well, it, it, it is. And people talk a lot about sleep. And yeah. I know we we talked a lot about sleep. Yes. And in part of my previous study on neuroscience and how the brain works and the critical nature of sleep on the brain, we need that minimum of seven to nine hours. I'm much more disciplined at what time I go to bed. Since I've done the course, actually, I'm much more disciplined at what time I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning. So I, I do get that between seven and eight hours, that works for me. Mm, yeah. No. And it, But it's definitely the energy replenishment side of things. Yeah. If we, if we can't replenish, I look at energy or flow state like a bank account. And we always have to be in the black. We, and we can't just be in the black. It has to be somewhere near the a full tank. I think, well, for myself, for me to really be in in the flow state, my tank, my energy tank needs to be, or my bank account Mm. needs to be pretty full. If I start, if it starts to get into the red, nothing works. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it's like, stop, okay, off we go, somewhere else. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, and you also are talking about moving from your office into a room that is, has got art in, that is creative, has got light. And so you're moving into a different energy space as well. You're very, it sounds like you're very aware of that feeling and the energy around you. How much difference does that make, Lynette, to you? It sounds like it's quite a lot. Massive. I mean, I'm in my office right now. I know it's all blurred out at the back and I've got a million books behind me and it's a lovely space. But I suppose psychologically, I've told myself, this is my workspace. Hmm. This is where I work. I talk to people. But when I go into that other area, the environment, it's open, it's lighter, it's much, it's uplifting. I love my office, don't get me wrong. But, you know, it has a specific function. Uh, For me, that even though that's my dining area, (laughs) somehow, for me, it's much more creative. Yeah. Um, And... And I find that whatever creative or innovative work I need to do, I automatically go in there. Because the one thing I have learned through all of this work is that environment is critical. And environment creates the energy for for high flow. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So then moving into the work that you do with your clients, have you integrated that? I'm sure you have done. Have you integrated that with them? And has that been easy or is it something you were already doing with them? I was doing a bit of it before. I'm not, now much more aware of how I'm working with this work with my clients. It, and everyone's different. Everyone's an individual and obviously everything is bespoke with them. So If it's the right thing to do with that client, then we work on, you know, because what I'm what I'm finding with all my clients is how exhausted they are. There's burnout, there's exhaustion, and they're spinning 50,000 plates, whether it's home life, whether it's work, all of it. It's this 24-7 noise. And it's helping guide them through ways in which they can utilize some of this. And some of it can be breath work, box breathing, for example, very simple stuff. And again, what time do you get up in the morning? I never thought I'd be asking my clients, talking to a CEO, what time do you get up in the morning? And they go, what? Um, I do say to them beforehand, I will be asking you because they they want to get more energy. They want to 
to feel that they're in, in greater control of what they're doing. Some of them, they've got very young families and their kids don't care what role they have in a, in a, in a business. They just want mom or dad home. You know, when they come home, they don't care if they're exhausted. They just want to spend time with mommy or daddy. So it's being able to help them rebalance. For me, it's about balance. And then taking that balance, talking to them about bank accounts, which they fully understand. <laughs> um, but, you know, converting the energy piece into high flow. Mm. And we talk, we do talk about it in maybe five or 10 years ago, I would never have mentioned it. But now I'm finding myself talking more and more about how they get into that space. And often they do it through sheer terror and fear. And they say, well, what if we remove the fear? But if we look at the fear, what's driving that? Mm -hmm. So we actually go pretty deep into that and to understand some of the, you know, oxytocin's doing to them. And, and I explain it to them, what, what it all means. And they go, oh, okay. So because some of them understand some science. So I mix the science with some holistic work, some, you know, it all depends on the on the individual. I, I'm more conscious, much more aware of how I'm bringing this into my work. I'm also bringing some somatic work, which which works with flow because it's working with the body. Yeah. The number of people who don't connect mind and body, to, I find terrifying personally, but um, mm. yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, so, so it's a whole, I look at it from a this yeah. holistic perspective. See, it's why we get on so well in it. Because at the end of the day, I always say to people, I'm coaching a whole person. I'm not just coaching you as CEO, I'm coaching mm -hmm. you as the human. I think for some people, as I say, it depends on the individual. Some people just want to keep you. Let's just talk business. Okay, that's fine until the trust has been built. It doesn't, mm. take, it doesn't take too long for them. Yeah. And then when they start to integrate those things that you're teaching them, yeah, they must see a difference. Uh, no, uh, mass can. Massively, yeah. massively. But the, the other thing as a coach, as you know, you can't take on their stuff. No. So it's being able to keep yourself in that high flow state, which I believe helps <laughs> develop what I call a Teflon coating <laughs> <laughs> where because to take on other people's stuff does not help them and does not serve them at all no you know so it's about also self-care with some of them they have some real issues not just personally but maybe one of their children has a has an issue or this their partner or someone at work there's always something Mm. everyone's got something going on bar none so it's how we can support that and to help people get into that high flow state I have to be in that high flow state mm. yeah. and knowing how to do that there are times when I, I mentioned to you earlier that I, I have a back injury yes for at least a week there was no way I could coach anybody because I was, I was just not able, not putting the physical side of it aside, but how it was affecting me both emotionally and mentally. Yeah. There was no way I could be of service to anybody, including myself. Yeah, but you had to start with yourself, and it all starts with that self-care. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So important. Fantastic. So if there's somebody listening in, Lynette, that is perhaps their first time really hearing about this what would you suggest that they do if they're looking either for a coach or they're looking to find out more about how the flow state might affect them or how to get into that what do you what would your top tips be perhaps three top well, tips my my suggestion is they should call you because you i mean your experience your background your understanding of high flow states is is second to none you know, and I know that we connected for a reason. Um, I I think that they should contact you because there, you know, to me, there are micro changes people can make, and it's the small steps. But it, it just needs one step, and it, it just makes that one step different. It's that one domino, isn't it? And That's the correct. Whole stack goes down. Absolutely right. Yeah. And you know, and if you're unsure, 
Lucy doesn't, you know, Lucy talks in, in English. So she understands, you know, and what I mean by that is that she can explain it properly. You know, you can talk to scientists who sort of, and it all goes way above our, all our heads. But I think when it's explained in a simplistic way, if one, it's not scary, and two, mm. it's easily accessible because it's about us. We have everything that we need to be in a high flow state. Yeah, and it's just understanding about it. Absolutely. And there are steps. Everything has a process and there are steps to take. Yeah. And, you know, we all fall off at some point and then we climb back on again. So, you know, and the key is not to beat yourself up about it either. Well, thank you for that. So that was your, your number one tip. Do you have a couple of others? I hadn't even asked what your tips were going to be. Oh, right. As I say, micro changes. So I think this self-discipline is quite important here mm. because I remember learning that um, getting the ba your basic life stuff sorted out as quickly as possible. So, you know, what time do you go to bed rather than well, I'm just going to sit up and I remember us learning that sitting in front of a TV with a bottle of beer in your hand is not relaxing. Relaxing, not recovering. Because your eyes, your optical nerves are still going. And if you're watching something that's exciting or scary or something, you, you know, your body is reacting to that all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessarily relaxing. Uh, relaxing is a lot of people don't know how to do this. Do nothing. Mm -hmm. Just sit quietly. Yes. And do nothing. So that's a tip. Do nothing. It doesn't have to be for long, <laughs> but just to ensure that all the noise just starts to dissipate. So that's one tip. And that takes a bit of practice. Yeah. But if you start getting into that little bit of practice each day, five minutes here, 10 minutes there, and then you start to build that. These, what I call, as I said, these micro changes. And the other is, Stuff start to get a bit more discipline in your in your daily rituals. Mm, love it. Thank you. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Lynette, You're for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure interviewing you. Chatting. Hopefully, it's been it's it's been useful. Most definitely. Well, I think our audience will be uh, found it very very useful. Most definitely. Well, and thanks. I know that we've we've both enjoyed chatting. Always. <laughs> <laughs> And, and thank you Lucy thank you for thinking of me for this thank you thank you and I so, wish you well and I wish your listeners well as well yes most definitely now there's for our listeners there's going to be another video coming up on screen so do have click away on that and I'm going to see you over there thank you very much for tuning in and thank you Lynette once again thank, thank you, you very much okay take care, take care. Thank you. bye bye, bye.